right. I'll go ahead with the announcements right quick. Uh, we got the new, we got the daily breads back there, and again, I want to thank Betty for that. Uh, we are making a few changes on time changes starting this Wednesday night. We'll start earlier with choir practice at 5.30, the meal will be at 6, and prayer meeting children's activities start at 6.30. This is the way they get the children home, get them to bed a little bit earlier and stuff. And some of us old people can't see as well at night either when driving, so. But uh, we'll try, we're going we're gonna to try that and see how that works. And uh, we'll start back the Bible study this Saturday at George's and Paula's again. How's Monica doing? Okay. Okay, good. And I've got that uh, deal for Renee Polk at, on the, what day is it, the 22nd at Pilot Point School Cafeteria. So put that on your calendar, and uh, you can make a donation at the Pilot Point Bank, too, also, I think. Any other announcements? Yes. Need to need to pray for uh, Larry and Margie. They're going to be leading the singing this morning. He's going to do the he's going to do the special music too. And so we're in for a treat there and get a break from me. And <laughs> but, uh, we got I think Steve Carey's going to be here the next week, maybe the next week, and then Steve Sparkman's going to do it the last week. So we're going we're going to kind of break up this music a little bit. Try to get somebody that knows what they're singing and knows how to sing. So just uh, pray for the service, pray for uh, Brian as he brings the message, and we'll uh, have a word of prayer, and I'll let George get started. Heavenly Father, I, again, I just pray right now for this uh, Sunday school hour and the worship hour, and I pray for these ones that were mentioned this morning, Lord. I pray for healing for the ones that need healing and comfort for the ones that need comfort, Lord, and I pray for George right now as he brings the Sunday school lesson, just giving the words that we need to hear, Lord, and I pray for Larry and Margie and Brian's, they bring the uh, worship by our Lord. Just fill us all with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and I pray that we let your will be done today and not ours. Lead and guide us through the remainder of this day and just forgive us our sins for asking your name. Amen. I don't know, but I think Junior has been doing a wonderful job. Oh, all this time, I, 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 I've not heard anything that I didn't think he did it great. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's in great hands. But it's, it's always good to have some help. If I can get my stuff ready. I have missed being here. I do not like being away. I feel empty when I don't, I'm not able to see you folks. I mean, just really empty. And, uh, and I missed everyone here. I mean, I, I, I thought about everyone. I consistently prayed for everyone. I, I have more time to pray, even on Saturday and Sunday. I said, whoa, to, to just be able to be with you folks is life-giving. I'll, I'll tell you that. It's life-giving. It, 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 it gives, and it gives me hope. It, it, this is the encouragement. This is what provides courage for us to continue. And, and, and for me especially, because I always question myself. I'm always questioning, who am I? Who am I in you, Lord? 
Am I really doing what I'm supposed to? Am I really walking the way I should? It can, it can be a weight of, because you start to question. And I don't know about you folks. I, I just know that in me, I have to remind myself who it is I serve. Because in the end, all that matters is him. And so today, we're, we're going to talk about, I'm going to show, look at two perspectives of who God is. Two perspectives. And the main scripture for today will be Matthew 6, 9 through 13. That's going to be the, the, the main scripture. But we're going to start with a different scripture today. Even though that is the main scripture, that is the whole purpose of this. It, I'm going to start with Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. And I'm going to ask if Verna could read 6, 1 through 8 when, I, when it's read. Because this is the two perspectives of God I want, I want us to look at. I want us to, to look at him as our creator, from our place as his creatures, his creation, his own, that he knew from before we were even in the womb. Think about that. The, the wonder of what that means. He knew us before we were even in the womb. It is, we are not a surprise to him. It's not like coming home and our sweetheart going, honey, I'm pregnant. God knew us before we were even there. And I, I want us to, to look at ourselves through the eyes of the creator and how we need to see ourselves. A lot of the times we see ourselves this way. It's based on others here in this life and we forget that what we need to be is looking up looking to him and looking at ourselves through his eyes not even looking at ourselves through our eyes to him but looking at ourselves through his eyes back that's, that's maybe a little difficult to do at times but Isaiah you would read that? Isaiah 6. Yes, 1 through 8. Oh, wait, did I say 6? Six, 6 yes, in the years? Yes, 1 through 8. I think that's it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord <coughs> sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. <clears throat> and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. What a gift it is to be the one that is sent. He starts off with the fact that we're looking at it here. Let's break it down from, from Isaiah uh, through, to, through the eyes of someone who not only walked in the right way for that time. And we're talking Uzziah. So if, for those who have been part of the, of the study for, for, 
for Hosea, we, we know Uzziah is the king in which Hosea is, begins his ministry from. And we know that Uzziah was a king from the time he was 16 years old. He reigned for 52 years. That was an amazing, amazing amount of time for one king in that period. He had some good ones. Hezekiah was there. There were other, but he, he, he walked in a way that started so well. He did, he, he, he created such a, 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 they were doing incredibly well as a people during that time. They had an army that was stronger than it had been in years. It was almost what it was like during the time of David. It, it, he had done wonders through God's gifts, through God's blessings, through how God watched over him. And then he lost himself to pride. In his pride, he tried to burn incense in the temple. The priest tried to stop him. The Levites tried to stop him, but he would not listen. And he started to, to scream at them. And at that moment, in his pride, sin plates itself on his body. We call it leprosy. Leprosy came upon him, and he, for the rest of his days, would have to be a part could not be in the temple, could not be leading his people directly. His son took over. If you want to look at that, you can go to 2 Chronicles 26, 16 through 21. So that's 2 Chronicles 26, 16 through 21. But the whole chapter is about Uzziah. It begins with his reign and it ends with his death. Leprosy is a picture of what? Oops. Anyone? When you see leprosy in, 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 in the Old Testament, what is that telling you? What is in the camp when that happens? Sin. Sin is in the camp. Sin has... It, God tells us that sin sits, waits at, outside at the door but that we could control and not allow it to take a hold of our lives. It does not need to bind us unless we allow it. But he let his pride do it. So, so many years he did well. So many years the kingdom was greatly blessed. And his kingdom was affluent, we know that. He was powerful. But sin, when it rears its ugly head, will stumble anybody. And it stumbled him. <sighs> Falling and feeling and chastening of God is what we... You know, when God loves us, he chastens us. We go through stuff. We feel some pain. We know that he loves us that he cares for us, that he wants only what's best for us. So when we start this, we start with this Uzziah. He, he's talking about Uzziah. They just lost their king. Does anybody remember, well, I'm sure you do, when Kennedy was shot? I can remember where I was. I was a little kid, but I can remember. I can see the tears in my mom's eyes, the pain she felt for what was done. A nation grieved. Uzziah's nation grieved. It was a big loss for them, 52 years, a king. And then you have God. In the midst of all of this, God presents himself 
through Isaiah. He opens the way so that Isaiah can see him. They call him Lord with the, o, the capital L, the little O, the little R, the little D, for he is being called Adonai. Adonai means uh, Lord. It means master. It means uh, it, it's, it's, it's a sovereign one. It's the way the Jews kept from utilizing God's name flippantly. It was the way they kept themselves straight so that they didn't use his name in vain. It was very important to them to keep his name clean. Did they always? No. But that was the, the reason for it. Adonai is, is, is placing him in a place where he's saying, you are Lord and king and sovereign. You are the one who we serve. Later on, that word is mixed. Baal also means Lord. Baal is of the gods of the peoples around them. God says, one day you won't call me Lord. You're going to call me Ishi, husband. And so we see that God's train is oh, huge. A king that has a long train. A king who has this filling a room says a lot about who he is. It's a shaul. It's a skirt. It's a hem. It's a train. It fills the room. It's his majesty fills the very heavens. That's his glory. It fills the heavens. And the seraphims his creation, his creatures who are closest to him, who are looking at him each day, cover their eyes and cover their feet. God said to Moses, you can't look at me. If you did, you would die. You can't look, but I'm going to let you see my back as I pass, the glory as I pass. And even that put such a light on his face that people were afraid. He had to wear a veil for the longest time so that they could, he could talk to them and, and work with them and be with them. That's the presence of God. And you look at a man who his whole life has been spent following Uzziah, doing what is considered right in that day for God. And God wouldn't have shown himself to someone who wasn't ready. And yet, when he sees God, he screams out. He falls to his face. He cries out, woe is me. For prior to that, you hear the voices of the seraphim singing out, screaming out, crying out, holy, holy, holy. They didn't just use it once. They didn't just use it twice. But Jesus many times would say truly. Sometimes he would say truly, truly. I want you to listen. It's truly is amen. 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 Listen. Hear me. Truly, truly is an exclamation point. There are only two, there's another time when you use three. When, this, when the angel is screaming, Whoa, whoa, whoa! For the earth. During the time of the tribulation. Never do they use this with any other attribute of God. Holy. Holy, holy, this is what we need to 
recognize his holiness, the wonder of who he is. That's his glory. His righteousness, his justness, his graciousness, his kindness, his love, all in who he is, that which is holy. The one who is so holy that when you see him, if you see his face, you cannot survive. Not on this earth, not as corrupt as we are. Recently, there was a uh, thing that was sent out to people, a survey, that said, do they believe that man is born innocent? 65% of the evangelists said yes. We are lost. Our churches are losing their way. Paul makes it clear in chapter 1. In chapter 3, Paul makes it absolutely clear that we are not good. That there is none that is good. That all have fallen short. That we need him. How easy is it for us to forget that? How easy for us who are supposed to know? See, this is all of us that can lose sight of that. We start to think that we're better than we are because we're looking this way. Not that way. Not through his eyes. So when we look at that, we see that we serve a holy God. When you think of that, I mean, give me your thoughts. When you think, here in this passage, he says holy three times. How does it, what does it say to you? Anyone. What does that say to you? David, what does this say to you? And he says it, doesn't he? He tells us. He knows of none. How does it make you feel? Larry, when you think of that, how does it make you feel? What does it say to you? How does it, how, what emotions, what thoughts come to your heart? That's, that strengthens us, yes? Yeah. We don't revere him enough. We don't have the reverence we need. I know a lot of, you know, I came out of the Catholic faith. Had to come out fast. <laughs> now, now, I don't say, there are some very good folks there who know him, who put their trust only in him, but, but Jezebel has poured in all from the outside that which is wrong. The praying to saints, to angels, to Mary. That's, that's Jezebel. But yet there are there. There's a remnant in there that stands firm in him. And you know what they teach better than most I've ever seen? How to revere God how to reverence him, how to see him as God, not just our friend, not just our buddy, not just our ATM. That's an important thing. I 
think here we have that. We understand that. There are many churches, like I said, that don't. And we need to cry out to our brothers and sisters and tell them, you're losing your way. You've come off the wide, you've come off onto the wide road from the from the narrow road. The road that leads to perdition is wide. It says you can bring yourself to God. You can do enough works to save yourself. You can add to your salvation. You can take away from your salvation. He says, no. I have you. And I've done it all. I've paid the price. To tell us die. It is finished, paid in full. There is nothing else. So when we see him in his, pro, in his pain, in his woe, 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 and he sees himself as he actually is a filthy pauper with nothing to offer God. He says, I am a man of unclean lips. From the tongue, from the mouth comes the heart. The issues of the heart show up in how we speak and how we act and how we live. That's here. It's the lips, but it's here. And we need to understand that. And he saw it because who was he looking at? He was looking at himself through the eyes of God, of his Lord, his King, the true King. The one that reigns forever. And that's the place where we begin. Because as we have talked about in the past, it brings us to that place of being poor in spirit. Being able to understand our poverty. Being able to mourn our sin and the sin around us. It's not just our sin. We mourn for those around us. It matters. They matter. We are no different from them. Yeah, but that, if not by grace, we would be in the same predicament. It is He who has provided for us. It is He who has made way for us. And, and as we go through this process, we get meeked. We become usable, pliable, able to be be. A, 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 a people that follow after him and we hunger and thirst for righteousness. We desire him more than anything else. He begins conforming us into the image of his son, right? Does, do you, when you think about that, think what that means. You can't continue living life the way you did before you knew him. And from there, we get a pure heart. A pure heart allows us to see God. The pure heart allows Isaiah to share that moment with God. But God took coals, hot coals, onto his lips to remove, to burn away that sinfulness that he dis has such a distaste for. He has, has a hatred for sin. He cannot abide it. So he puts those hot tongues on his mouth. And now he can use them. And he says, who shall go for us? Us, not me. And he says, here am I, Lord. He didn't say, here I am. I'm, I'm in this spot here. He's saying, here am I. I'm ready to go. Send me. Do we ask that every morning? Do we think about that every morning? Very important. It's one of the most important questions we could ask ourselves. Am I ready to be sent? Do I ask that question in the morning, Lord? Do I say, Lord, will you provide someone that I could share you with today? A 
And so we come to the second part, which I have very little time for. But it's such an important part because it's Matthew 9, 6, 9 through 13. And I ask again Verna to read that because I know she's reading it out of the New King James and she always is ready. <laughs> yeah, 9 through 13, verses 9 through 13. won't find that in some Bibles, the last piece. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. For they took it out of the text of Alexandria rather than the manuscripts that came out of Antioch or the Byzantine side. And they say, there, there, was, there, there was a minority in there that had it. There are some problems. It's been happening since the beginning. Be prepared. Look carefully. I can show you spots in the word that are missing. Yes, sir. The new King James, yeah. It, they, they took, this is, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get away from that because that can lead us to another rabbit hole. But I can say to you, yes, ma'am. Yeah, but I, 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 I want to get to the point. I want to finish this part because this is what it's all about. Yes, ma'am. And, but the reality is it did. That's, they already broke that. They already tore that out. Uh, they went out there and they looked at the Antioch manuscripts. Those were, the, ma those were the, the major number, the bigger number. What happened here was they took the, this from the Alexandrian, Alexandria manuscripts. And they said, oh, the majority here don't have this. But that was the smallest number. When you took that from the ones in the Antioch, you now change that whole number. So if you got 20 of them here and five of them here, and why is this? I'll, I'll give you a, a, I won't be able to finish, but I'll give you this. Oh, I'll be able to finish maybe. Uh, the manuscripts, most of the manuscripts written in Alexandria are Gnostic. They removed the deity of Christ. I can show you in 1 John 5, 7, I think, that there is word in there that says that he, that the, the God, the word, and the spirit in heavenly, heaven, in the heavens, the witnesses are God, the word, and the spirit. They bypassed that. In 1 Ephesians 1, it says, to be holy and without blame in love. Colon, he predestined. When they change it to, to be holy and without blame. And in love, he predestined. That's a different sentence. When you look at the Greek, the structure, it should be in love. It should stay with that part of the sentence. The interlinear Bible, the old one, will show up the right way. The new one puts a comma in the other spot. It's where they got their manuscripts from. Everything before that, the Darby, even the Dewey Rhymes, which is a Catholic Bible, had the correct at that time, because it was 1599. So are some of the other. It depends on where it came from. So I have an issue. 
Because if you can change the word even this much, it brings to question the word to many people. I had a person who came to the house who, for a Bible study who kept complaining that the word has been changed, the word has been changed. He's correct in that the newer versions, it has been changed. Some to try to make it more easily understood. I'm not much for a transliterated. I want it translated. I want to have what was said. Let me figure out the rest. Exactly. Jesus says that not one jot or one tittle shall be removed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In the end, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where it comes that's what it comes down to the Holy Spirit it comes down to him yep yep and, that, and that's where we come to that's where we have to be be ready to we pray before we go into the Word. I know that I have seen things, and I, I, I'm just reading, and something hits me and says, wait, 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 wait a second. Is this right? There's something wrong here. And so I start digging. And I start digging, and then I find, I said, whoa, this is different. I didn't catch it because I was looking for it. I caught it because God told me. Sometimes we just have to be ready to listen. You know, uh, Larry is, has taught me that you have to be ready to listen. When you pray, you can't just be pouring out and not getting anything back. If you're getting nothing back, it means you haven't reached anybody or anything. And God will talk to us if we just sit, knowing that he's God. And trust him. I am out of time. <laughs> so I cannot reach the second part of this. So I will say that the next time we come together, we will finish this. And, and, and it's just, just remember that the second perspective is him as father, Peter. Him as father. He's not just God anymore. He's Father. He's not just Lord to the Israelites. He's Ishi, husband. That's personal. That's distinctive. That's fellowship. That's family. For we are part of the Father's house. And there is nothing better than that. Father, we praise you and we thank you for this time. I just am grateful for the folks here. And Lord, I just pray that you would continue to bless them, keep them, watch over them. Lord, keep them healthy. Don't let any of these diseases come upon them, Lord. I pray for those who are sick, like Lou and Wade, and I ask that you just heal them, Lord, and so that they can be here because their light shines when they come in through that door. Father, I pray for Morris and, and Bonita, and I ask that you continue to heal him and provide strength to Bonita, Lord, because it is so hard. It's a hard thing to take care of people. But you know, Lord, you have blessed us. You took care of my mother-in-law. You saved her. And we praise you for that. We thank you. I thank you for the healing for the young men that, that were in motorcycle accidents. Lord, Matt and, and, and Baxter's uh, family. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to heal them and, and, and hold them close to you. Lord, teach them not to test you. Teach them to hold on to you. Teach them to know you. Father, I praise you for each person that's here and for those that are coming today, Lord, that are going to share in the word today. I pray that you would be in the word, that you would, sh that you would speak through the voice of our pastor. Lord, we praise you 
for the joy of, of, of being able to worship you and that Larry and, and Marge will, will provide a, a, just the leading that they need to, to provide to keep us all alive, sending up a great fragrance to you, Lord, that you would breathe it in and, and, and be, just be pleased with us. Lord, I know I have missed the mark so often. And I pray your forgiveness always. But I ask, Lord, that you use each and every person here to minister to those that they can come in contact with so that they would show who you are and how important you are for, that, for their lives. And so all of this I ask, that you would bless this place, that you would bless this church, that your spirit would fall upon it, and that there would be fire, tongues of fire, throughout. And I ask this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, fuck. Good God, woman. Knock the whole thing off. <laughs>